Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another board game unboxing. And technically this is an expansion-y kind of thing, or an accessory, or I don't know how you want to look at it. But this is for Masters of, <clears throat> Masters of the Universe, the board game, Clash for Eternia. This is the Plastic Castle Grayskull Pack. This was a Kickstarter, uh, a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, it comes from Simon, uh, cool minis or not. This was just an accessory pack that you could pick up that gives you the nice Castle Grayskull in a plastic version. Perfect for the board game itself. Um, yeah, part of the Kickstarter, like I said before. This is an add-on. Uh, I got the all-in pack. You can watch some of the previous videos in our past video section there. Go check those out if you haven't seen it before. But yeah, Castle Grayskull, iconic part of the Masters of the Universe lore. And it's great to have it for the game itself. Um, so it comes packaged in this kind of weird <laughs> cardboard box here. Uh, we do have cross-sell art here on the front. Um... We'll flip it over here. The side has the same artwork. The back has basically the same artwork, but just a little bit different. So it has uh, the components in it, which include the castle, the base, a hilltop, a training dummy, a weapon rack, a laser gun, a banner, a ladder. And it does state here that you do need the Clash for Eternia core box in order to enjoy this big thing here. So very, very cool looking. Uh, we'll keep rotating here. The other side of the box looks the same. There is kind of the same artwork here on the top. And then on the bottom, uh, there is nothing other than the cardboard. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Can't wait to get this open. So let's just go ahead and get to it here. Uh, so this thing does, like I say, it, it's a big cardboard box. There's not really a whole lot to it. So we're just going to start by pulling this flap out and see what we got here. Um, I'm guessing this whole thing is probably gonna slide out, so we're gonna try that. I'm gonna flip it up and just let the whole thing slide, slide out and fall down. <laughs> Put the box to the side here. Um, it comes in this tray system that just kind of fell apart on me. Uh, so yes, two big plastic trays here that, uh, <laughs> didn't really hold it in place. We'll stick it over here and then let's see what we got here. Uh, we got an accessory pack right here, which we will zoom in on and take a look at that in a second. We do have the actual castle itself right here. Uh, we'll zoom in in just a second on it a little bit here. We've got the base. And we got this cool uh, hilltop, I guess, is what that is. So, and then the base here. So, yeah, it's it's cool looking. I do like that. We're going to turn it up on its side here because that's what we got. Um, okay, so this is the hilltop. Um, it's elevated terrain. So in the game itself, you put this on the board and then you can stack characters on it. Uh, I should have pulled out one of the miniatures there, but uh, here is a regular D&D sized character, um, which is essentially the same size as what the uh, Masters of the Universe game is. So you can see these things sit on there very easily, very nicely. There's a couple of bigger miniatures that will, of course, sit slightly different on here. But you can see how that works. So uh, the plastic is plastic. Um, yeah, we're going to set this guy to the side here. <laughs> it's fairly sturdy. No big issues there. It's got some nice texture to it. It looks really cool. It's kind of got these, uh, not quite hex, but kind of hexy pattern thing to it. And you can see the different tiers here. So we've got uh, base ground level here and then you've got one step up and then a couple of these that are slightly higher but basically the same level then one step higher up here and then the final step up there so that's pretty cool 
we want to set that over here for a moment. Uh, we'll have to zoom in to see this stuff. These are the accessories. We have the base itself, which is made out of the same plastic as the uh, hilltop itself. Very nice looking. It looks like it's got uh, a nice little groove system to sit into here. Some extra places for your miniatures to sit on the side of the castle, etc., etc., etc. Really nice looking detail in this thing. Very cool looking. And then we've got the castle itself here. So this is the big boy, the money. Uh, it is made out of a weird plastic in that it's not this kind of hard plastic. It's more of a soft plastic kind of material. Uh, very much like an old piggy bank used to be made out of. Uh, but really nice looking details. We've got all sorts of cool stuff going on here. We've got obviously the... Uh, the actual door itself. We got some doors up here, a perch, a little side piece here that you can get into. More doors on the side here. Turn it over to the back. We've got the, the back side, which doesn't have a whole lot going on, but some nice detail in there. It looks very much like the original toy used to. And more stuff here. Uh, that kind of secret entrancey thing right there. More shuttered doors and windows. And then on the top up here, we've got a couple of different places for them to stand. So we got the, the high tower here, the not so high tower, and then the kind of base stuff here. So all in all, it looks really awesome. Uh, we do have a door here. So I got to figure out how this door opens. I don't know. So how do we open this door? Does it just come out? It's a drawbridge, so I don't know. I didn't see any instructions or anything, so uh, I guess we can just oh, you can just kind of grab it and pull down on it, and it kind of opens. It's a little wonky, but then once you get your hand on it. The drawbridge does lower down there, and it's got the standard tongue there, and the little teeth and everything. And then you can see inside the castle itself. Uh, perfect size for your He-Man character to sit inside the doorway and scream, I have the power. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, Scale-wise, I think this works pretty well. I mean, it's kind of a smaller castle size that I was expecting. Um, but as far as scale goes, it still works pretty well. I mean, it's the drawbridge the guy sends on it and it looks correct. So no problem there. I just kind of think it really should be bigger, <laughs> but I know that's kind of hard for them to do all that stuff with. But uh, so as far as these ledges go, you've got this ledge up here. So a character can stand up there very easily. You've got this little outcropping right here that has a little indent in it. So you can put a character on the side here and kind of shift him back in here. And it stands there very easily. Again, depending on the, the character you got, you may have to shift things around to get in the feet to fit in there correctly. But you can see it, it works pretty well, actually, even with a D&D &D miniature here. So... Very, very cool. Uh, there's no other places on the sides. I mean, there's this doorway here that's not really a doorway. But then the top here, your characters fit there, fit there, fit there. And then three spaces here. So all in all, it works pretty well here. Um, let's fit this thing onto the base. Pull this base here. And then just kind of line it up, and it just should just, uh, it doesn't lock into place, it just sits there. Like so, but it does look cool there. And then you just kind of grab with your finger somewhere on here and just kind of pull down to get it to open. And that pops out like that. And I'm guessing. We can take this piece here and put it 
I'm guessing it's supposed to go like this. It doesn't really lock into place or anything, but it does give you that kind of illusion of fitting together so that when you bring the drawbridge down, it sits flat on this area here and gives you access to it. So your little character here can uh, jump up here and then jump up here and then go here and then jump up here and then jump up on the drawbridge. So yeah, that kind of works the way it's supposed to. So uh, yeah, that's it. So um, I guess let's uh, zoom in and take a look at these uh, extra miniature pieces here, the accessories, and we'll kind of go from there. So uh, yeah, we're going to pause it and zoom in. All right, now that we are uh, zoomed in, we can take a look at the accessories. I'm going to, uh, I should have done it before I started recording, but uh, I'm going to reach back here and grab this black board here to stick this on so that we can hopefully uh, get this stuff to pick up a little easier. All right, so let's open this bag here of accessories and we're just going to dump them out here and see what we got so these are actually pretty cool so i don't know how many of y'all out there um actually remember the original toy line for the masters of the universe but the castle gray skull that came in that set from the 80s uh these are the actual accessories <laughs> that came in that box so that's that's pretty cool to me i really like that idea here so we're going to just start by taking a look at i guess this uh ladder um, and we'll just try to see if we can get it to look at it and see. Um, not a lot of detail in the ladder, and I may have to dial the uh, light down a little bit here. And it's pretty good here. So we got a little bit of detail. You can see the like ribbons there, and that's pretty much all the detail we got. But uh, so the like leather bindings holding the actual stairs in place so very cool i don't know where exactly you would put that on the castle we'll figure that out in a minute but there's the first accessory then we've got this uh cool flag very nice it's got the actual uh emblem from the original castle gray skull those cross swords there and on the back side it's the same thing Size wise, this thing is about the same size as, uh, so base wise, whoops, base wise, same size base as a standard D&D miniature. Uh, and you can see the height. It's taller than this dude. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, we'll stick that over there. Uh, next up, we have the training dummy. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, on the original one from the, uh, the toy line, this thing would actually spin around. Um, this one obviously doesn't spin. It's not articulated, but still has the same design aspects here. We've got this cool bore. Uh, this actually has more detail in it than the original toy line one did. Uh, that original one did not look like a uh, like a, a bore. <laughs> it was stylized. Then on this side, we've got like a fist, little punchy thing. And then the cool little feet things and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool little accessory there. Nice. All right, moving on. We've got, uh, I guess, the weapon rack. Might as well grab that next. Lots of cool little detail here. They did a really good job with all this stuff. So you can see uh, all of the weapons here. We've got this nice mace. we got a laser rifle there. we got a hand axe, a little hand sword, short sword. A halberd, a spear, and a big pole axe. Uh, then we got like a pistol right there. And on the side, we got this cool shield. So very nice looking. Uh, this would be a great little accessory for any like D&D campaign or anything like that. Very cool looking. I like this a lot. These weapons tended to get lost in the original toy line. So it's a nice little throwback there. And you can also see the wood grain on the actual bar itself there. So very cool looking. I like that. And the last piece we have here is the actual uh, laser cannon. I don't know what else you call it, but it looks awesome. 
Uh, I will say that it is actually made of two pieces, and it does move, so it is articulated. You can go up and down with it, which is just like the original toy line was. That's awesome. Front, back. So on the original, this little piece here was actually created so that it would slide into the top of one of the towers on the castle. Uh, that doesn't work for this one, but it's a cool idea anyway. So, And then for like a character to stand beside it, you would see it's made pretty much the right size so that uh, it looks like somebody's actually made in this cannon gun turret thing. That's really cool. I like that a lot. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the accessory pack here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the actual castle again since we got it here. And we're going to take a little bit look at it a little closer up. I like the detail on all this stuff. You can see all the brickwork and everything in here. It looks menacing. There is the actual door itself. Uh, this is the thing that's a little wonky. Um, so there's not really a good way to actually get the drawbridge to pop down. Uh, so what I'm doing is just grabbing this bar that goes across with my finger and then pulling down and it kind of works. It does help if you're actually pulling not up on it, but you know, down since I'm holding this at an angle. But so yeah, uh, so there is the, the artwork or the detail work on the actual drawbridge itself. And then it folds down, you can just see the inside there. So the drawbridge itself, and then the inside of the mouth there. Very, very cool looking. I like it a lot. So we have this thing here, which is, I guess we can probably bring the light back up a little bit here. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Uh, so. We got this little ledge up here so uh, your character can stand on it. There's a doorway to go into the castle, the top of the castle here. This little ledge here on the one side. More of that detail work here. And then rotating it to the back here. Very cool looking. And then the side over here. It's very nice. I like this thing. The bottom is hollow, so uh, it's very much like an old piggy bank. <laughs> I guess you could still stick some change in there if you wanted to, but uh, there's no plug for it or anything like that. Uh, and my only complaint really is just the door itself. It's, I mean, it works pretty well when you have it laying flat like you're supposed to, and then you go in there to try to grab it. But it does seem like there should have been some sort of catch to help you open it, but it's not terrible. But yeah, so uh, that is our Castle Grayskull here. So uh, we have the castle, we've got all these cool little accessories. We got the little uh, terrain piece that goes up to the front of the, the castle, and then the actual base itself here. Uh, again, some of those details there. Very nice. So this, Again, it was a Kickstarter exclusive, so uh, I don't know if you're going to be seeing very many of those to purchase. Um, but who knows? You might. Was it worth the money? That's a good question. Um, I think I like it. It does definitely add to the feel of the game, but it's definitely not a need to have it for the actual gameplay value of it, because really it's only acting as terrain. So, like, you can't go inside the castle. You can't explore anything in there. You can stand inside the drawbridge. You can stand on top of the castle itself and a couple of places around it. So, it is still a little limited, though. It's got a couple of cool little accessory pieces at the top. Um, I'm not sure how well they play into the actual game itself. We'll have to find that out, I guess, at some point. But... Anyways, that's the unboxing of it. Uh, uh, once I get some gameplay into it, I'll, I can probably chime in a little bit better. But uh, that's it. So it's it's pretty awesome, though. I do like it. If you're a Masters of the Universe fan, 
you're probably going to want this if you don't already have it picked up because it is definitely one of those pieces that just kind of the icing on the cake, so to speak. So, yeah, something like that anyways. Well, uh, that's all the time we've got for today. So thanks for watching, as always. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, hopefully this kind of helps you understand what's going on with Castle Grayskull for the Masters of the Universe Clash for Eternia game. <sighs> Drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Um, what do you think about this? Is it just an overpriced piece of big money bank plastic? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or do you think this is uh, definitely a must-have kind of thing? Drop those comments down below. Let me know. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. we got more videos coming down the pipeline. we got the uh, previous unboxings of the Masters of the Universe Clash for Your Attorney board game. And we've got more of those uh, Kickstarter packages coming down um we've got the expansions we've got a couple more accessory kind of pieces to look at so uh yeah be on the lookout for them they should be out pretty soon uh i guess that's it for us so until next time game on but always never forget you have the power <laughs> i don't know we're gonna end it there though